Um, and prior to being an education technology coach, Este was a math teacher. Um, so seen both sides of that. And in recent years, she's been helping teachers to implement remote learning strategies, blended learning environments, um, and technology, using technology to make learning more flexible and more meaningful. Um, so she's in an ideal position to share uh, her valuable insights and offer us some advice on how to get started in blended learning in these challenging times. Um, and in particular, using Kami, of course. So if you have any questions during the presentation, put them in that uh, chat window. I'll collect them up, and at the end of Este's presentation, I'll put your questions to Este. But for now, it's, uh, I'm done, and it's over to Este. Take it away. Hi, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here today with everybody. Um, my session today is blended learning for the flexible classroom. So thank you so much for joining me and being interested in that. Um, like Bob said, I'm an educational technology coach from Beaufort, South Carolina in the United States. Normally I get to work with teachers and students on using technology to support teaching and learning in the classroom. As we shifted, just like so many of you probably did, to virtual instruction in March, my role shifted uh, to virtual support. And I can't tell you how much it mimicked that frenetic pace that we probably all were feeling during that time. So the teachers in my district, just like probably all of you, are part of one of the most flexible professional groups around. And today with COVID-19 in the mix, we have stretched ourselves, stretched ourselves, and our students even further. Now, as we get ready to start a new school year, I'm continuing to support the teachers in my district in preparing for various opening scenarios, included both virtual and blended models. So with that framing in mind, today we're gonna to take a look at five characteristics of blended learning, how those characteristics might look in a time when we may have to go virtual at a moment's notice, and how CAMI can support our efforts. So I'm gonna give you a moment just to read this definition of blended learning. And this definition just came from me. It's my definition of blended learning based on my exploration of this topic over the years. What I've seen is that there's been a trend in education that evolved from flipped classrooms to blended learning because many teachers started realizing that having all the learning take place digitally and all the practice take place in the classroom wasn't quite the right recipe for success in every case. So these five characteristics that we're gonna look at today came from research. And from my own experience as both a classroom teacher, I was a high school math teacher, and as an educational technology coach. And the way we're gonna approach this is that along with each characteristic, I'm gonna outline some CAMI tools that support that characteristic. As time allows, I'd also love to show you some real teacher-made CAMI lessons that I am using with the permission of some awesome teachers in my district. These span a variety of grade levels and subject areas, so hopefully you'll see something that personally resonates with you. So let's get started and give me just a moment to switch my screen here. Okay, so I'm back with you on the screen. And we're gonna take a look at our first characteristic of blended learning which is that good blended learning is deliberately designed. So whether you're creating a document to teach your students or you're creating a document to have them practice or even to check their understanding, Cami can really work for you and help you create that perfect document. One tool that does this really well is the split and merge tool because you can take different PDFs that you have or even Google Slides, Word documents, just different documents, and you can take the pages and drag them down, it's just like drag and drop. And you can see here um, that that's happening. And then you can export those and send them into Kami or even download them. So you can really get just the right content on the pages. And if one is a portrait and one is a landscape, you're able to rotate them. So you can really just mix and match um, with that split and merge tool in Kami. So that, that is a great tool to get you started with deliberately designing. Then as you're getting going, 
you can actually like cover up and manipulate your document a little bit by using, you know, with just a regular shape, a box, you can fill it. So if you've ever been to the copier and taken like a piece of paper, cut it out, taped it over something, because you were like, oh, they don't really need problem number 25 on this, on this particular worksheet. And then you can add in your own direction. So this is truly just like a substitution to what a lot of us have probably done in our lives using whiteout tape um, to really kind of design that perfect assignment. But Kimmy's is not just about substitutions. So there are some things that you know you can do on paper that you can't do digitally, like cutting things out and pasting them, right? So you may have had some sorting activities for your students. And um, so I, I wanna show you that there's like a, an option for that digitally, which is to do something drag and drop, right? So you can, you can enhance your document in Kami by creating a drag and drop. And I'm gonna show you that. And I also wanna show you something else because um, the link to my presentation is probably shared in the YouTube description, but also um, you will be able to have a link to this at the end. I'll be showing you the URL at the end too. And so you'll have these links to click. So when you click this link, it's gonna take you to a PDF that happens to be in my Google Drive and you can download it. Okay, so the download is there or sometimes it's under the three dots. And just like any PDF that you download, that'll come into your downloads bar. Well, with Kami, if I click my Kami Chrome extension right here, and it takes me to the Kami website, or you can just go to web.kamihq.com. Now I'm gonna take my PDF from my downloads and just drag it here and drop it to open. So it's gonna open that PDF. Now I've opened this like a thousand times. So it actually recognizes that and asks me which iteration I wanna open, which is kind of cool, but I'm gonna make a new copy. So I wanted to make sure you saw that process so that you would be able to open any PDF that you saw in my presentation very easily with Kami. So in this document, this was just a standard PDF that I brought in um, of a character web. You can see I used my pen tool to cover some stuff up and I added a little image here. Um, and I added a page. So I just added a blank page in Kami. But the drag and drop that I wanted to show you that really enhances this beyond just a, uh, making it a digital worksheet is that um, I added these images in. So now students are able to sort. So they can take these images, place them where they belong, and they have a sortable activity. So even though they can't cut and paste, they can drag and drop. And in Kami, when you're creating your assignment, your image tool is right here, insert image. You can upload from your computer, which is what I did because I wanted to have a transparent background, but you can upload from Google Drive or you can even do a Google search. So if you're just looking for a simple image here, maybe I wanted to look for a kitten, that one looks perfect. Then you can drop it and you can adjust the size and you're able to drag it around and place it where you'd like to place it. So you can use images to both enhance your document and also to create drag and drop type activities. So as you're designing, right, you're getting that perfect annotation, you're getting some things placed in there. Well, then you might need to move things around. So the select annotation tool lets you select and move multiple things at once. It's just found under the select tool, but there's a special icon that says select annotations. You click and drag, and then you can just move your items around. So as you're designing and as you're tweaking everything and making it look just perfect, that can help you really um, create that perfect deliberately designed document for your students. And I was, like I said, I was a high school math teacher, so I know that pretty math and pretty science is important. So you can use the, um, it, the equation editor, it's just a little divide sign tool that you see in Kami that allows you to um, create an equation. And also in the rich text editor, uh, there's an icon. So when you go to put a text box, you'll actually see this little function icon and you can click that and also open the the equation tool that way. So don't be afraid math and science people that you know it's not gonna have the tools that you need to make your math and equations look pretty. Your notation will look good in Kami. Now this is where we wanna start showing you some teacher examples. So I wanna show you um, an example enhanced by a teacher. So we're gonna move back over into Kami. So this teacher, I told you, this is gonna span lots of different um, grade levels and subject areas. So we have, you know, a reading and writing assignment from a very, you know, kindergarten, first grade teacher. And she's just added a little image here to enhance the rainbow writing that they're gonna do. She added a text box for some additional instructions. 
she used um, the actually the comment tool, the text comment tool here to paste in the link to a YouTube video. So her students would be able to watch a YouTube video about colors in case they didn't know their colors yet. And then she added some you know, video comments to explain. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, but you can see just with the simple enhancements of, you know, using these colors, the drawing tool to show the colors to her students, they may not be able, they, they may not be able to read these words yet. And then they can write each letter in the color given. So she was able to enhance that document um, and create just the perfect assignment for her students so that they could practice their learning. Sorry here. Okay, so the second, the number two um, if characteristic of blended learning is that it's facilitated by an engaged teacher. So that means that the student should feel like you're there with them. And when you're doing blended learning in the classroom, a lot of times uh, teachers do stations. So some students may be doing um, small group work with the teacher. And of course that teacher, you know, the student feels that the teacher is engaged in that case. But then a lot of the times, um, and in, in other students are working on their own, working independently or working in small groups. So how do those students feel like the teachers with them? Or if we're in a virtual environment, how do, how do those students working, sitting in a very isolated situation, working on their own, still feel like that teacher is there and is engaged with them? Well, one obvious way to do this is with the video comments. So by putting your face in the document, research shows that that automatically brings engagement for students. But of course, it also is going to show that the social, of course, the social emotional aspects of it, that you care enough to actually be there with them. But also you can explain the assignment. You can, it might just be giving um, better directions and are written on the page or giving a little bit more of what you want, but you're there with that document. Voice comments are the same. If you're not like camera ready, um, you know, you might want to just do a voice comment to explain the concept further or to, again, clarify directions. So just putting yourself in that document. So we're going to take a look at Miss Wilson's um, example here where she created a document. It's a lot of rainbow writing. Here's Ms. Wilson, um, here's Ms. Wilson's activity on action verbs. And she, of course, did some of the things that we talked about earlier where she's hidden um, some of the, the text here and put her own directions in. But then you can see where she has a, a direction. So we're gonna listen to this. Don't forget to put your name and date on the paper. So just a simple reminder, something she'd be saying to them in the classroom for procedures, don't forget to put your name and date on the paper. She is now um, has her little video or her, her um, voice comment there. And then further down, so she has some directions for them here. She has a video here. Write a sentence with an action verb to describe each picture. Underline the action verb. Then I want you to make a voice comment about each sentence. So. So she's going to have them. So not only is her face right there, uh, right there, so her students can um, feel her presence with them, but also she's given them instructions of what she wants them to do, along with the written directions that they have here. And she's even asking them to do a voice comment. So she's modeling that and having wanting them to give a voice comment to show their learning as well. Another way, of course, um, that you can that you can enhance your document and that you can show that you are there um, with your students is through a screen capture comment. So maybe it's not you, maybe it's not your just your voice, but maybe you're gonna record the screen. So doing this with Cami does require an extra extension, this, the screen capture extension. And I've linked on this slide the directions for getting that. So that's something you might wanna come back to later um, to watch those directions for screen capture but you can record your screen and your voice. So this is a math example. Math teachers, of course, you can see how powerful this is gonna be. Um, but anybody, if you're wanting to model for your students, this is a great way to model right in the document that they're gonna be um, doing their own work in. You don't have to stay in Cami when you do the screen capture comment though. You can hop out to a different website or, or anything else. So um, you have up to five minutes of recording time and you can add as many of these videos as you want. So we're gonna take a look at a few examples, or one example here from Ms. Bervenich. And she created this document all in Cami. She just started with a blank document and you can see she's added text boxes and shapes here. Um, and she has you know, other enhancements, but we're gonna take a look at her screen capture. 
comments. All right, guys, so what you are going to do for this part of the assignment is first you're going to watch this video on how Earth's atmosphere was for general idea of how Earth's atmosphere we have a word bank of words down here at the bottom. These are my suggestions for what you use for your captions. If you want to do something on your own, what I would do is I would pick the first one and I'm going to pick water vapor forms, the blanket of steam around Earth. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to make an illustration that goes with it. And you can see I'm going up here and I'm going to zoom in so it's a little bit easier to see. And um, you all know that I am not a great artist. So um, I'm going to do a very simple drawing and up from the surface of the get really fancy and I'm going to make this less transparent here so my steam is a little bit different color from my other so as you can see not only is she modeling the content and talking about um, earth's atmosphere here but she was also modeling some of the tools of cami showing them how to zoom in showing them how to change their transparency so she um, has that screen capture there they're going to feel a lot more confident in what exactly she's expecting them to do by watching this video and they're going to understand the content piece of it as well. So that really helps them feel supported by their teacher as they are uh, working on this assignment. The third characteristic of blended learning that we're going to take a look at is that it is learner centered. So we are designing these with the learner in mind. And if you saw the universal design presentation earlier, just was fabulous at showing you how to be learner centered and really even building your assignments from that place of thinking of your learner first and not trying to fit them in later. So Cami has a lot of tools that are going to allow you to be creating learner centered activities. Of course, um, we talked about voice and video comments already for, for you to, to build your assignment, right? To support your students, to scaffold things. But don't forget that something that's gonna be very important when you're thinking student-centered is feedback, okay? Or as um, you know, our keynote speaker said, feed forward, if you will. Um, but giving that feedback through voice comments. So voice and video comments are a great way to give specific feedback to your students and let them make corrections and improve their learning. Also, speaking of feedback, if you are uh, using Cami with Google Classroom, when you go into your grading screen, there's actually this checkbox that you can check and get all the Cami features right there in the grading screen. And I think this is invaluable as a teacher trying to give feedback. People are asking, you know, how am I going to give feedback when I have hundreds of students? And just the fact that this lets you sort of flip through the assignments very quickly uh, is, is very helpful. Um, so you can just use that. Of course, you could write on the screen, but you can also use those voice and video comments within Google Classroom to give even more personalized and specific feedback. Now, this is like my favorite hack. There's a signature tool in Cami, so you can like sign your name and put a signature and that's helpful. But you can also upload pictures into that signature tool and then they stay there in Cami and you can kind of pull them out as stickers. So one of my favorite things to do is to use images as um, a signature, quote unquote signature, but really as a sticker. And that gives you a, a different way of giving feedback, a more visual way to give feedback to your students. Beyond feedback, when we're talking about student centered learning. We really want to make sure that every step of the learning process is supported in some way so that students can really progress and, and work individually when they need to. So I love HyperDocs. You probably have heard of HyperDocs before. And I think Cami is your perfect HyperDoc tool. So I have a sample here um, from high school, high school math sample that I created. So in my mind, you know, my student needs to refresh what they've already, what they know, what they need to know, their prereqs, right? So they have a few examples where they're going to click this little video and they can watch a video from YouTube just explaining how to do a few examples of graphing a line on the coordinate plane. And they're going to get some explicit instruction on it, like this is what it is. Then they have to write their own, so they're going to show their understanding. Then you're going to use a video or audio comment to explain. So I'm using some links out to these videos here. Then I'm doing some teaching within the document, right? They're demonstrating. Then they're going to click out to a link. So when you're making your text in Cami, you can do a hyperlink just like you can in many other tools and link right out to, in this case, Khan Academy. And I put a little screenshot of what they need to complete. 
okay? And then they're gonna come down and do some practice later with the screen capture comment. So they're actually going to solve a system by graphing here in Kami, you know, just using the drawing tool, but they're gonna use the screen capture comment as they do it so that they can demonstrate not just the final product to me as their math teacher, but like that they actually got the process. So they're gonna talk me through it and show me through it and I can really see their learning. So setting up your documents as this sort of hyperdoc where students have the chance both to learn and demonstrate their learning in one place um, really shows that student-centered aspect. And then that's the high school math version. Okay, I definitely wanna show you um, something for our elementary teachers out there. In this case, this is very a worksheet, facts about reptiles. So the teacher just asks them to watch this video so they can click the little link in the video pops forward here. They watch the video about reptiles and then she has a screen capture tool here just demonstrating what she wants them to do. All right, boys and girls. First, today we're gonna to be learning about fact, we're gonna be, oop, it's more colors. So she's just very, you know, demonstrating to them, again, not just modeling the content, but also modeling the tech here for them and showing them how to use these tools. And her showing them and, you know, making little mistakes along the way is going to give them confidence that they, they can do this as well. Okay, so they are supported in a couple different ways on this document. And it's just a simple hyperdoc with just the link to the video that they're going to watch and they're going to draw some facts in here. A fourth characteristic of blended learning is that it is multimodal. So there are many different modalities in which you can teach and learn. Um, you know, we're talking about things like auditory and visual learning. So not only do you want to create assignments that have these different ways for, for students to learn from which they can learn, you also want to let them express their learning in multiple different modalities. So a couple things, first of all, in the learning part, um, you saw in many of the samples that there were YouTube videos as, as comments that kids could watch. Uh, I like to teach my teachers to use the little bubble. So they basically go to the text comment, right? You click there, you click like you're gonna do a text comment, you click on the screen and it makes that little yellow bubble, just paste in your YouTube video, and then the students can click that bubble to bring forward that comment to them. So that's really, simple, easy way to get some visual and auditory content in there for your students so they're not just sitting there reading. Um, and so I have an example for you, which I think is so enhanced um, by, by being able to just have these simple YouTube videos. And these are, you know, YouTube videos that exist out there, but don't forget if you have a bunch of YouTube videos of your own that you've created over the years to help your students learn, you can link those in here too. So that's another way to get yourself into the, the video. But this is about the Brass family. Can you imagine if you were trying to learn about the Brass family just by reading these paragraphs? So instead of just that, right, they just have their little bubbles here so that I can click this. I can see the video that comes to the forefront. I'm gonna play it. Oh, here we go, sorry. And now I understand a lot better what a mute sounds like when used with a brass instrument. So then students will be able to listen to what each of these instruments sound like. So they can actually hear what they sound like. And then they're going to come and explain why they, which instrument they like the best. It would have been really impossible for them to explain which instrument they like the best without these little YouTube links as text comments to allow them to hear what those instruments sound like. Um, also, when we're talking about being multimodal, I, I keep bringing this up over and over again, that the video and voice comments, of course, are going to be uh, multimodal when you're creating your assignment. But don't forget that students can also do this. So it's not just about the, the learning that they're doing, but it's how are they expressing their learning and can they do it in other ways besides just writing and drawing. So allowing them to show their learning in video and voice comments, you saw that uh, modeled throughout the different activities that I've shown so far, where teachers are asking students to speak or to, um, to make a video. So an example of this from a high school English teacher here, she really designed, this was again created just in Cami with some questions here. So she's added her um, instructions. So she set it up in a couple different modalities. She has a video for them to watch and she just has a link to the PDF of this speech so they can read it. So they can read and listen. 
And then she has questions. I'll just type their answers to some of these, but then you can see she has different things sprinkled out here. They're gonna do a voice comment here. This question they're gonna answer with a video comment. Down here, it actually asks them to do screencasting to parse the sentence. And it wouldn't really be impossible to, to do that any other way besides the screencasting so that she could actually see them in real time doing what they're doing. Um, and then another voice comment down here. So she has really allowed her students to use these different modalities, both in their learning, right? To pick and choose and use both and hopefully something will click for them and then to share their learning as well. So having that choice in there um, and letting your students, you know, have different ways that you're asking of them to, to express their learning and then also giving them choices on that really can help um, with being multimodal. And we're just gonna look at a few more because again, that's the high school example. This is not just for high schoolers, okay? You have just here a simple um, assignment where that looks like they're just doing like an art project, right? Draw a monster. Um, but then if you listen here to her instructions, when you're ready to talk about your monster, make sure you have clicked on the two red boxes and then you can start talking. So she, that was a little hard to hear, but she said, you're gonna click on the two red boxes and start talking. So she put a screenshot here showing them exactly what they need to do. They're gonna click on this box and then they're gonna click on the microphone to, to talk about their adjectives and to use their adjectives. So she is pushing them beyond just writing or giving them another opportunity, a different modality to express their learning um, through speaking. And again, just another example, um, elementary math example here where they're counting tens and ones and she has the YouTube video so that they can watch this video and listen and learn from that. And then they, um, she has a voice comment here. So she's putting herself into that document to explain what to do. And then they are gonna record their answers instead of just writing it out. So giving them a different way to express their learning besides just writing. Speaking of different modalities, um, I, I've, I haven't talked much about one of the main ways that teachers use Kami, which is the drawing tool, right? That, you know, that, that basic substitution level where I can just open a worksheet digitally, now it's paperless and my students can write on it using Kami and um, I don't have to, you know, make any copies, right? Whether I'm virtual or I'm in the classroom, they can, they can just write on the document. But the drawing tool isn't just for that substitution level of activity. You can also use Kami to do sketch notes. And so that drawing tool becomes really powerful in that sense. And if you're not familiar with sketch notes, um, there is a link to a blog post from Kami. But the basic idea is that students listen to like a lecture, they're listening to information where they would normally be taking notes of some kind. And in the case of sketch notes, the notes are a drawing. So this is an example from um, Mrs. Hill that I worked with her last year and her students were studying military strategies of the Civil War. And I learned that eighth graders could not spell strategies to save their life, but they could create some really amazing notes that are visual notes as they were listening um, to her instruction about military strategies. And so you can see the common female themes there. Um, they have the same basic uh, overarching themes and they, they were able to actually make some really nice drawings using Kami. And we were using styluses with touchscreen. So in our district, our students have uh, touchscreen uh, laptop type devices and they were able to use a stylus to create these drawings. And they use some of the techniques of um, using like different transparencies to enhance their documents. So the fifth characteristic of um, blended learning is that it is collaborative. And that collaboration may be between students or between the teacher and the students, but it's not just that isolated. And I've said it before, but I mean, can you just imagine anything more isolating than just sitting at home by yourself in your room as a student just doing this schoolwork. So if you know they are working fully and in, fully independently, then we really should provide them some opportunities to be collaborative in a, in a variety of ways. So there is, um, Aiden was talking about, he really was focusing on the Google Drive and how you can share documents through Google Drive and still use Kami with them. And so definitely you wanna do that and use those Google Classroom features also if you're a Google Classroom user to make your document so that anyone can edit and then it's a Kami assignment. But you can also within Kami, um, just get a little link to copy. So you click your little share document link and you can turn it on so that anyone with the link can annotate it. 
and then you can send that out to your students. So if you're just doing like a Zoom and you want to get everybody on to one document and you want them all to be able to annotate it, that's just a quick way to get that link to send out to them. And I know I can say from the professional side of it, uh, I'm in a group called Educators for Equity in my area. And, you know, we are focusing on how to have like social justice uh, be more present in our schools. And so we had some articles and somebody was like, well, what's a way that we can all just sort of annotate this and read this together? And I was like, Cami, let's do Cami. And it was so powerful to see everybody marking up this document, using voice and video comments and responding to each other just because we got this one little link and sent it out to everyone in the group. So um, it really can, it really is powerful the way that Cami can allow you to collaborate with your peers. Something else that you may um, be interested in is whenever you are thinking of collaboration, I think of conversations. And so voice comments, right? I, my, my teacher can have a voice comment to start me off. I can respond with a voice comment and we can go back and forth and have an asynchronous conversation. So it's still collaborative, it's still a conversation. It just doesn't happen in, um, you know, it's not synchronously because it's asynchronous. So this example on the screen is like a world language example where maybe as the teacher, I might read the question and then the student might come and read the response. So we're gonna just take a look at that. So in this case, you can see the voice comments here where the student can listen to the question. Quantas manzanas hay? And I apologize to any Spanish teachers, that was me reading that. So, um, and then the student will come and do a voice comment with the answer. So they'll just come along, do their voice comment and read the response. Hay ocho manzanas. And they can come and do that through um, for each question. And sometimes they'll need to read the question. And then that will scaffold up to where they're actually uh, filling in the question themselves and then you know answering a few more questions. So that asynchronous conversation can happen there. And then later in this assignment, they actually have to find a partner and in, they'll record a video where they and the partner are reading the question and response. So if you were in a blended situation and you're in the classroom, you know, students could actually pair up doing that and put their video in. And if not, if you're all virtual and um, they're at home, well, then they may have to find someone in their household and actually teach them what they need to say. And so that's a different type of collaboration that, that our students are able to do. So then they can do some collaboration with someone in their home and we can get a video of that. So we, how powerful is that? Not only have they showed their understanding, but they taught somebody else and brought them into a video and showed that they could explain it to someone else well enough um, to, to record that video. So whatever the case is, however you are building in that communication um, and that collaboration, whether it's between you and students or whether it's between students, Tools of Cami can definitely support you with that. And that brings us to the end of our five characteristics. So as you are creating your assignments, using those tools of Cami, hopefully you're thinking of your learners, deliberately designing and getting that content exactly how you want it, using different modalities in both how you're instructing and the types of ways that they're gonna show their learning. And by doing that, of course, you're gonna be right there with them as a facilitated and engaged instructor. And they're gonna feel that collaboration that between you and their peers that you create. That, I have some resources for you if you wanna read a little bit more um, about blended learning. Most of us kind of know what it is exactly, like, sort of know what it is, but if you wanna learn a little bit more and go a little deeper with that, you can check out these sources. Um, this is my shout out page to the awesome teachers in Beaufort County School District that were so kind as to let me use their Cami activities. Um, they, you know, they were not, they're not experts at using Cami when they were making these activities. They were learning just like you are. And these are the things that they came up with. So, um, you know, you should not feel afraid to just get in there and try to create some of these activities because you can see how how powerful those assignments really can be. And that's me again, SD Williams. Um, please hit me up on Twitter if you wanna continue any conversations. If, if there's anything we don't get answered in the Q&A, um, just use that hashtag Cami Connect. And I am SC Educates in, on um, Twitter. So I would love to continue these conversations with you. And you can see my URL right there, tinyurl.com 
slash Cami Connect 2020 SD. I know it's kind of long. Um, look for the link in the description. And um, I look forward to, to hearing more from you later and right here in the Q&A. So I think Bob is gonna get that going with us here. Yeah, let's get that going. Get that Thank going. you, Esti. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, I learned a lot myself on that presentation. The first thing I learned <laughs> was that uh, that Beaufort County is actually pronounced Beaufort County. So, <laughs> no worries. There's a Bo there's a Beaufort, North Carolina. So it happens all the time. <laughs> it's a great day when you've when you've learned something. There you go. Um, yeah. So the first question I've got for you is the question that everybody on the um, channel wants to ask right now, which is, where did you get your Cami t-shirt from? Oh, um, I got this, uh, fortunately, at FETC. I got this from um, the, the wonderful Cami crew there in Florida, but I bet that there are some giveaways going on um, where they can they can get their own, and it's awesome, right? You guys love it? I love it. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, it might be some shirt. time before we're, uh, we're at in-person events again, but uh, in the meantime, <laughs> we've got some events running. Um, what else do I have? Um, and also, if you become a Cami hero, you can also get a shirt. So if you if you know you're using Cami a lot and you're not a Cami hero already, you should definitely um, check out that the process for that. Yeah, that's reason enough alone. So um, yeah, um, you talked us through a lot of the features of um, of Cami and how they used uh, blending learning, blended learning environment. Um, do you see a um, do you see a difference in the way Cami is used between elementary and high school students? I think it's really room? just that's a great question, and I think um, it's probably really a focus on the content more so than the tools. I think that you know you saw some of those teachers in the demonstration. People might be hesitant to be like, "Well, is my you know third grader really going to be able to make like a video comment?" Um, are they going to be able to record a video? But I mean, every third grader I know like wants to be a YouTube famous. They already want a YouTube channel. So giving them the opportunity to put themselves on video, they're like, they're going to be excited about that. High schoolers always act like they hate it, but they're always appreciative of the opportunity to show their learning in a different way. So I don't think that like, it's not necessarily the tools that you choose, but it's the way that you set up your assignment. So it's choosing that content, building out just the right assignment, and then determining what is the scaffolding and supports that you need to build in to support that level of learner. Great, great answer, Esti. And um, so I've got a, a couple of questions that came up that are um, they're going to test your knowledge of Cami. Let me just. Oh, I hope you can help me. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, I'm not allowed to help out. <laughs> Let me try you. Um, if uh, say I'm sharing. Uh, you talked about splitting and merging documents, taking a large document, splitting it down to um, to share out maybe one page out of a document you've got as an assignment. What about if I only want to share out part of a page? How would I do that in Cami? Oh, so like if the so my best solution for teachers that that want that is what I was kind of showing um, where you can use like the white box to cover up the part that you don't want. So you can't like you can't take half of a page and split that out in Cami necessarily. Um, I would also say you could always like screenshot that part um, because you can bring in a, an image into Cami. So if you're just wanting like a portion of a page, um, depending on if you're using, we always use like that snip and sketch tool on Windows, or you can do, I think, um, command shift and like three or four if you're on a Mac to pull up that screenshot tool. Um, but then if you're wanting like a single page out of like a 90 page document or you're wanting, you know, you only need the pages without the answers on them because you have like all the answers included, then you can definitely just bring in one document and that's the split part of the split and merge tool. And you can just grab one, one single page out of the document. So as long as you want the full tool, split and merge will work for you. But if you're wanting just a portion of the page, you're either going to have to cover it up or use a screenshot tool just to bring in that portion. Faultless, you are on fire. <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, one of the things that Henji and Jordan and the team try to do is make sure there's at least two or three different ways of doing any, achieving any one aim. So yeah, you covered that um, in that example. So um, yeah, some more technical questions like um, you showed the select annotation tool and doing copy and paste. Uh, can you do cut and paste with annotations? 
Um, so like, in other words, when I select the annotations, can I cut and paste? Yeah. I don't know. I've only tried to move things around and um, manipulate them a little bit. I haven't tried to go that far. Do you know the answer, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Um, yes, you can. <laughs> you're one down. Uh, Cut and paste and copy and paste using the select annotations tool. So it, if you needed to move something from one area to another, you could cut it and paste it somewhere yeah, else. That's right. And <laughs> um, what about the, you showed the comments on the margin. You're making um, comments at various points in your document or the, the learning resource. Um, is it possible to, to respond to those comments? So you can respond. Um, the so that when you respond to a comment, it's only going to be like a text response. It's not going to be like a video response in the actual chain. So like there'll be the video and then the chain of comments below. Um, so if you are wanting like that more asynchronous, oh, and, and you can do speech to text in those comments. So if you want to speak the answer, it will speak it and turn it into text, but it's not going to be like a voice comment. So I like to maybe, I like to make sure to put a place for where I want the student to record a response if I want them to respond with a video or a voice comment. Um, so to yep. sort of, uh, I don't know, deliberately design that aspect if that's what you're wanting them to do. Excellent. Um, we also had a, a few questions about, you mentioned um, SEL, social emotional learning during mm -hmm. your presentation and there were some questions just asking to elaborate on um, yeah, right. how, how the so use of Kami and, and work in that context. In that, um, it's just, to me, it's mostly just like you getting your face in there um, in the document, in, in your document, because so often I just think our students are feeling isolated. I, I just, I don't want to say like, I just watched this video on Facebook, but I just watched this student film on Facebook um, of how the girl felt like sitting in her room and it just showed, it was like a time lapse of her every day, just like the same thing, wash, rinse, repeat, you know, over and over again. And she was just isolated clicking and it showed her screen, clicking on assignments out of Google Classroom of just like and typing and that was it. And so by you being there, you having your videos in those every single day and you know however you can get your presence known of course if you can do a synchronous lesson live great but you can't always do that and you won't be able to reach every student doing that but with you know cami and you're putting your videos in there and your voice in there then you're able to whenever your student can get to it they can see and hear you and feel that that connection and i think there's research that shows that having the teacher's face in the video um, actually does increase engagement. So that's a great way to do it. Yeah, I think we've had, we've had more um, feedback, um, more gratitude, if you like, for, for that feature, um, the ability to embed video comments uh, into the document for either the teacher to do it or students to embed it, just to, during the remote learning, to, um, to keep engaged with, uh, with your students. Um, yeah, it's turned out to be... Um, from what we understand, extremely popular. Um, and here's an open-ended question for you. If, um, if you had the choice, what, uh, what's one feature that Kami doesn't offer that you would love to see in Kami? Challenge us. <laughs> it's funny that you should say that because I have a personal mission for Kami to bring, this isn't like anything necessarily related to blended learning, but for Kami to bring sticker packs into um, the image tool. So instead of just inserting an image or a signature, um, if there was just a little icon for a sticker pack and you know you could have different themes um, that you could pull from. So my little sticker sheets that I had in my classroom, you know, same idea, but to give students quick feedback. Um, and I think that you know that's just an engaging, fun thing to do. That everybody everybody loves stickers. I taught high school AP statistics, and there was nothing that brought them more joy than getting a sticker on their paper. So. Yeah, we have, uh, I hear you, and we have heard that a lot. And um, well, let's see, because the next session coming up is going to be our um, product updates from Henji. We're just going to walk us through a demonstration of some new features coming out for the start of the new school year um, and show you what those, what those new features will do for you. And uh, so let's find out if that is part of them. Um, no spoilers. Um, what I also wanted to ask your view, and I've asked a lot of people this in recent months, is um, 
It's just that question of how do you see what we're going through at the moment impacting longer term the future of K-12 education? Well, um, you know, I think you could look at it as like, the, like, some people might look at it as like this apocalyptic, like nihilistic view of like, well, now that the computers are going to start teaching kids and we're not going to need teachers or anything. But I really think that, um, you know, they always say that learning is best when it's timely and relevant. And wow, has educational technology ever been timely and relevant as, as this time? So teachers are learning things that they just simply didn't have time to learn before out of necessity now. And I think they're starting to see that a lot of tools um, you know, in this realm are not just for the virtual environment. They really are for that blended learning. And they, they'll feel more confident in creating blended learning where they can actually within even their own classroom that you can still like work with kids in small groups and then have other students working independently with technology. And they understand how to support teaching and learning with technology so much better now. So I'm just looking at it as like, wow, we all like put so many tools into our toolbox and we all got so much better in the past three months and we were just ready to go into the future. We're all gonna be better um, and have more you know, tools at our disposal and students will have more skills too.